right, we're going to take a look at the new motion tracking behavior in Motion 3. So we're going to pull a video clip here out of the file browser. And if we play this video clip, you can see that this is our friend Carly, who's out in the blue forest. And she's got a little LED book light, and she's pretending that it's a sparkler. And so we're going to see if we can help her make this a little more realistic as a sparkler. So first step is to make sure that I've got Carly selected. Then I'm going to go to the Add Behavior menu, and under the new category Motion Tracking, I'm going to choose Analyze Motion. Now we can see that the Analyze Motion behavior has been added. In the inspector, we can see some controls for this, and we can also see the crosshairs. The next step is to go to the very first frame where we want to start tracking. And I'm going to go to the start of the project because this is the frame where I want to start tracking the motion of this little LED book light. So I'm going to drag the little target crosshairs up to the light. You can see that I've got my auto zoom set to four times. The default, you can also go to eight times if you want, just to blow up that section of the video and make it a little easier to place your tracking crosshair. Now that I've found the object I want to track, I can press Analyze. And Motion will attempt to follow this light as it moves around and identify it and place motion keyframes, basically generating motion tracking data. Now you notice here it got lost. It got distracted by Carly's shiny hair, and who wouldn't? So it actually backs the playhead up to the first keyframe where it's confused, and it really doesn't know where that object is. If we go back a keyframe with the left arrow, we can see that here it knows where it is. But as soon as we get here, we have no motion tracking data from this frame. All we have to do here is find the flashlight for motion, and then let's see if it can follow it from this point. We hit Analyze. It did not. So I'm going to stop here. And basically, we're going to have to help this motion tracker get out of the forest here. It's kind of stuck on the shininess of Carly's hair. And you notice that the keyframes are all fine up to a certain point, and then it just kind of gets confused. So we're going to have to help it once its confidence gets low, right around here, this yellow graph being the confidence. And uh, we're going to have to help it generate keyframes after this point. Now you notice, I zoom in on this area, that the current frame is represented by a larger white dot with a thicker black outline. So as I step through the frames, frame by frame, I can see all these are fine. It's doing a good job tracking. That one's okay. Uh, let's see, that one gets a little bit off. So I could just kind of tweak a couple of these to make them a little more accurate. And you can see that it's definitely getting distracted here by the shininess. And you can see that it's a really good idea to make sure the object that you want to track is very distinctive in color and brightness from the areas around it. That's the best possible situation, because then you're just going to have a lot easier time tracking it. Now, if I can drag these little dots into the middle of the uh, flashlight, just for enough frames, motion should be able to pick up the scent from this point forward and uh, kind of follow the trail. So now that I've set these keyframes manually, I'm going to go ahead and delete all the erroneous keyframes, the erroneous motion tracking data by pressing the delete key. I'm going to go to the first frame where there is no motion tracking data, position my crosshairs again, and click Analyze. Now you can see that once again, it just wants to keep going back to her hair. So we're just going to have to do a little bit of work here. We're going to have to go back and find out where it goes wrong. And we can see it's fine here. This is all good. This is the first point where it goes bad. So we're just going to have to tweak this. Now these frames look good. And then it gets lost here. Now you might think, it would be nice if it, in the case of doubt, case of low confidence, would find a point closer to the previous known location of this object, rather than thinking that the object had jumped all the way back onto her head. But it's free with the upgrade. Anyway, we're to the first point frame now without the motion tracker. So once again, we're going to locate the object and see how far motion can get. 
It's got a few frames. Just remember, before the motion tracker, you actually had to do this manually, frame by frame. So you have to admit, it is saving us some time. Even if every once in a while it does get lost, and we have to show it where this object is, I'm sure things will improve over time. But for now, it still is a great time saver if you want to uh, track an object. So it's doing well so far. OK, it got lost here for a few frames. So once again, we're going to back it up. And the same thing, we're going to find the last frame where it's finding the, the object well. We'll tweak the last couple here a little bit. And as soon as it really starts to lose the trail, we'll help it with a couple of frames. Her arm is kind of bright here. And then starting about right here, you notice the confidence is high, and then confidence goes very low. We're just going to delete those keyframes, and once again, start the motion tracker and see if from this point forward, it can follow the trail. We had analyze and just went a few frames and stopped. So we've just got the last few frames to do manually. Once again, keep in mind that this is previous motion tracking in motion was a completely manual setting of keyframes. With motion like this, you could set some Bezier's, but mostly you'd be doing it frame by frame. All right, so now that we're finished, we have these keyframes tracking this little light. Now let's find the sparkler. We'll go into the library and go into particle emitters, sparkles, and we have something here called magic dust, and that looks pretty good. So we're going to add it to our project. And then on the magic dust particle emitter, we're going to add a behavior under motion tracking called match move. Once we've added match move, we have the ability to choose what set of motion tracking keyframes it's going to match at the current time. You can see that uh, the source has been set to Carly. We want the source to be this set of tracking keyframes. So we drag it over. And now you can see the sparkler is tracking motion, but the whole layer itself is just off a little bit. So we can actually just go up to the whole layer and just kind of offset its position so that the uh, emitter of the particle, which is this little crosshair X, is actually right there where it's supposed to be on top of this little light. So once we get that positioned, we should be able to check out our project from the beginning, turn off overlays, and press play, and we should have a nice little uh, sparkler following the book light. Ah, uh, Carly's a lot happier now. And in an upcoming product, we'll show you how to add a little yellow glow that shines on Carly from the sparkler without affecting the background. Anyway, there's another warp speed workflow from DB Creators.